Brandy here from Ignite Artists. I'm back with you at New Image College. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the different softwares that actors use to represent themselves because there's three main ones you need to know all the details about, uh, especially here in Vancouver, but they go North America wide for different jobs or casting post different things. So thanks again to New Image College for putting this all together. We're in their theater studio right now. Uh, they're doing lots of great lessons about everything film and TV oriented and makeup. So if you want to like and subscribe to this channel, you'll see lots of great content coming up. And they're going to continue to do them all or all working from home during this crazy time. So I'm actually going to jump on a computer right now. And one of the New Image College students that's fairly new to acting, he's given me his permission uh, and his headshots and his video and his resume to actually create a profile from scratch, start to finish on all of the different softwares so I can walk everyone through it. So it might not be the most exciting uh, workshop, but it's really crucial for all of you to know the ins and outs because that's where all the jobs are for the actors in Vancouver, so it's great. So we'll start with Actors Access. Um, so maybe get your laptop out, make sure you have a notepad, and feel free to ask questions as we go. Feel free to shout out and say hi too. I can see your guys' comments and I'll be answering uh, questions as we go. But I'm gonna try and go through all three softwares. So I'm just gonna jump on the computer right now. And don't forget to subscribe so you get more great videos and more great content that we're creating for you guys while you're working from home. Thanks for joining us again. See you soon. Oh, and Elka, shout out for the great shirt. Thank you so much. I love the message. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to pull out Actors Access, um, very first thing on my screen here. Uh, and if you do have questions as we go, please let me know. Uh, I know the software can be a little bit confusing, so I just kind of wanted to do, from start to finish, how to create a great profile. So if you haven't done Actors Access yet, uh, you can go to actorsaccess.com and if you go to the green button here, create free account, that will take you inside and you have two options. Okay, and I know everyone's on a budget right now, especially during this difficult time. Um, so the free Actors Access account is completely fine. It allows you to uh, upload two free photos and your resume and look at different jobs that you can submit for. It also allows you to give access to a representative like an agent like myself, and then we can submit you for some of the projects as well. So all you have to do is choose the free one right now and hit sign up. If you are hoping to self-submit for a lot of great indie projects, uh, some smaller commercials, and even some feature films, if you invest in the Actors Access Plus for $68 for one year, you can, um, you know, you can self-submit for a bunch of things. You can see here, the check marks show you exactly what you can do. So if you have the free account, it allows your agent to submit you for all the big projects. And it also allows you to self-submit for the projects, but you have to pay per submission. Um, so it's really good to, to read the options here. So you can see it's $2 per submission on the free one. Uh, but the Actors Access Plus, $68 a year, gives you the ability to submit for things that your agent cannot submit you for, like some of the smaller indies. Um, if you're not sure about this, feel free to talk to your agent. That might help. Um, but Actors Access Free is really all that we need as your agent to represent you, especially at the beginning, uh, and submit you for some of the jobs. So, hey Jesse, hey everybody, thanks for the saying hi. Feel free to write your questions in there as we go to, but I'll try and go from start to finish. Uh, so like I said, this young man named Tristan, he's a student at New Image College right now. He doesn't have a profile in any of these softwares yet, so I'm going to be creating basically his profile from scratch uh, for you guys to see exactly how it's done. Cool. So I'm just going to go over to sign up right here. I'm going to click on that. You either choose if you're a parent creating one for your child or if you're 13 or older. 13 or older, Tristan in, so I'll keep going next. Tristan. And guys, you might want to take notes for this. There's, there's a lot. Um, I've been working with my actors for the last year and a half to continue to improve their profiles. Um, and it can be a little bit frustrating because all three softwares are so different, but different casting directors use different softwares. So it's really important that you know how to utilize all three of them. And that's why I want to walk you through it step by step today. So I just put in his name. <laughs> A desired username, you can create whatever you want there. So they've created one for him, which I'll leave until he wants to change it. And I'll use his email address. Awesome. And of course we have to do it again. Remember, please don't be using his name and email address. Use your own <laughs> when you're creating your own profile. I'm just doing this for an example. And 
some of the things that you fill out in here, you don't, um, the casting director just don't have access to. So I have a lot of actors that ask, well, I don't, I don't want them to know my age. Uh, it's not relevant. I don't know, want them to know what gender I've selected. And, and they don't actually see that. That's for you and your agent to see. And it just helps so that your profile comes up and is sorted um, when, when casting is searching through all their submissions that they get. So it's important to fill everything out, but not everything is available to be seen by casting. So it is private. If you have concerns, you can contact each of the softwares or you can chat with your agent and see what they say. Um, because they can't legally know your birth date unless you're under age for a project that needs to be like an alcohol commercial, for example, you have to be 25 or older. So that's why it's a necessity to have in there. Uh, and if you haven't filled it out, you might not even come up in the search. Tristan, you want me to change it in your name? Sure, love. <laughs> uh, love it. Thank you. Glad to have you here watching me do it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, hopefully that's available. Tristan, I need your birthday. I just realized I don't have that information about you, love. So can I grab your birthday from you? And right now I'll put in Canada, BC, whoop. And your uh, postal code as well, sweetheart. I need that while we go. Now, guys, you'll see down here, um, notify me by email when a project is released that contains one or more rules that may match my profile. Please remember this is a computer deciding what matches your profile. So if you don't have your age range in here, it won't know to send you uh, age range appropriate things from Actors Access. And again, when it's on Actors Access, quite often it's not on the agent side, it's just for actors to submit. Um, so really important that you check that. If you want to be self-submitting and if you want to see some of the projects that are appropriate for you for self-submission, click that and then you'll get it. And you can also choose what cities you get them from. So Tristan, I'll start clicking a couple of them so you can pick, there we go. Um, and post code, perfect, thank you. And then you can choose your primary region. It doesn't mean that you won't see them from other places, but it shows you exactly where um, you're based so that you get to see those pushed very quickly to you. So I'm just gonna fill out Tristan's birthday right now. June 22nd. And guys, you can be doing this along with us if you don't have an account yet for yourself. And again, it's free, so it doesn't cost you anything to create. But it does take time. So utilize this time while you're at home working right now, maybe not in school or working as much as normal, uh, to really try and perfect your profiles because it does take time. There we go. Post a code. Uh, B5W, 1W4. Perfect. Okay, excellent. Let's see if that worked perfectly. Oh, goodness, scroll down. <laughs> I'd like to be informed of news, features, updates, and information. I would always have that ticked as well. Sometimes there's updates to the software, and if you aren't informed about them, you might not know that something has changed. So really important to have that in. Next. Oh, please indicate with rule 18. So I missed that button here. So yes. Next. Oh, goodness. Okay, so this is something that's, I did not know this did this. So once, because I didn't tick the box if he was 18 or older, it's making me refill out the entire form now, and this does happen with some of the softwares. So you just have to do the best that you can. So let's go back, make sure you don't miss anything. Like I missed that one tick box, that's making us redo it all again. Tristan, oops. So yes, so make sure you click that button, it makes you redo everything all over again. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's a new computer and mouse for me, so, and keyboard, so it's a little different. <laughs> Primary region, Vancouver. Vancouver and Los Angeles, why not? We can try that. And Tristan, you can come, you can log back into these guys and update a few things, it's all good. Okay, awesome. 
so it's been created, the account's been created, so once you got everything filled out, so just make sure you go through it so you don't have to redo it like I just did. Um, now you can go uh, in and start um, playing around with it. Once you, uh, if you want to add an agent to this, uh, once you put the manage request for an agent through, it does take a minute, so I do have to log back in now. So the Tristan Penny pass, oh, wait a second, it didn't ask us to create a password. Ah, Tristan, you might have to go into your email, love, and look up the email. Oh, I just saw that. I just saw your last message. Can you go into your email and see if it generated a password for you automatically so I don't bring it up here for everyone to see? And then you can shoot me a private text if you want so that I have that and we can create it. So guys, while Tristan is getting me his password, I'm gonna go over to some of the other sites and just show you a couple of other things. So we will talk about casting networks and casting workbook after Actors Access, but the reason why I started with Actors Access is because this is where a majority of the principal work is right now in Vancouver. Uh, casting workbook, which is right here, has about half um, principal and half commercial in Vancouver. It's a little bit slower right now because they're updating their software. I haven't seen as many posts on there and it does cost $10 a month for this one to create any profile, so it doesn't have a free profile option. Uh, but for $10 a month, there's lots of jobs on there, especially once the industry picks back up again. So I would encourage you to put aside one Frappuccino a month or whatever it is that you're spending that $10 on and invest in this because having a profile on all three softwares is really crucial to you getting access to all the casting directors postings for all the different jobs uh, in North America, okay? So really, really important for that. So casting workbook, this is what the main site looks like. Um, all you have to do is kind of find out more here. They've got all the different um, types of profiles that you can have, what it costs, um, and you can sign up for different types of profiles on here as well. So if you go to actor, all they want you to do is fill out this information. Uh, and then at the bottom, they'll give you options. But under pricing, it shows you right at the bottom here uh, that it's $10 a month to have. And this one, the great thing about this one is it allows you to, allows you to upload, as, I think it's like 16 headshots and character looks if you want, uh, as many demos as you can, up to three gigabytes of data. Like it's a lot of stuff that you can have on here. Um, and your resumes and voice and all these different things that you can have for just $10 a month where the other softwares, yes, they offer you a free option, um, but they cost different amounts of money to upload different videos, which I will go through. Um, oh, okay. I see a question. Hi, PMB. Hi, Alex. Um, while I'm waiting for the password from Tristan to come through, I'll just answer a couple of questions if anyone has them at this point. So I see how or where do you self submit on Actors Access? Great call. So, um, on Actors Access, you will, act, once you log in, sorry, I'll have to be able to log in to, to Tristan's account to actually show you, but there's under, where this kind of this red bar up here, you sent it me email. Okay, I'll go to my phone. Um, sorry guys, I just gotta find Tristan's password for a second. But in here, there'll actually be at the top where this red bar is, there'll be several options for you. And one of the options will be submissions. And then you'll see a list of all the different projects. And when you click on one of those projects, uh, you'll be able to log in. Okay, awesome. So I can do that now. Tristan sent me his password. That is an interesting one. Ooh. Um, and again, guys, you can change your password. And if you're ever not sure how, um, contact the support network. Keep okay, dying, that's a long password. Give me one second, everyone. Sorry, it's, it's huge. Dinah, I hope I did this right. Okay, <laughs> let's try that. Hey, we got in. Okay, so once you create your account, uh, they'll email you a private password to whatever email address you created your account with. Then you log in, and this is the page that you get to see. Okay, so like I was mentioning before, for submissions, see this bar up top, everyone. Um, hopefully, this is big enough. I will try and zoom in a little bit. Hopefully, that helps. Hope that's okay. If, if it isn't, guys, just let me know if I'm not loud enough or the screen's not clear enough. Just let me know when I can zoom in and out. Um, perfect. Okay, so in here you can do all those things. You can create your profile. Uh, but to answer Alex from Montreal's question, uh, up here where it says submissions, you just click on that bar and it'll show, um, oh, sorry, breakdowns. <laughs> submissions is once you've submitted yourself for things. Breakdowns is here. So say you wanted to see breakdowns that are in Vancouver happening right now. 
So if I click on that, it'll actually show all the different opportunities for you to self-submit right here. So you can see there's everything from music videos to feature films to shorts, episodics, open calls. Ooh, sorry, we have a fire truck going by. Um, so an open call for a comedy. So typically we'll have things like, we just want to see 30 seconds for, from everyone of a funny monologue, record them and send them to us. Right now, guys, is a really exciting time. I know it's a difficult time, but it's exciting for actors because casting now has the time to go through hundreds and hundreds of videos of new faces that they've never seen before. So I would encourage you to be doing this every single day going through here. Uh, it's great. Let me click on this one. So comedy talent search. Please submit ASAP. Um, so you can see down here performers. Oh, so this one's for people 11 to 15 years old or they can play 11 to 15 years old and they want comedic leading performers. And it literally tells you exactly how to submit. So this one right here shows how to submit, okay? So each one will be a little bit different. Remember, some of these are indies and things like that, so they have different ways of doing things. So you just have to read everything uh, very closely. A lot of my actors ask, oh, well, how do I know if you've already submitted me for the same project? On our side of Actors Access, it looks a little bit different. We usually see different projects, like most of the feature films and the episodics. When it's double released for us to submit and you guys to submit, it typically will say this. You can see the blue spot that I've highlighted where it says Actors Access Release. That usually means that they released it to the agents first and then released it to actors for self-submission too. So uh, it's really important to note that, but if you're ever unsure, you can just text, your, text or email however your agent prefers and ask if they've also submitted you for something. Again, down here it shows Actors Access, so that usually tells me that it was already released to, to uh, agents and then released to you guys on here. Uh, so it's important to know. So I would be going through the breakdowns every single day and looking for those open calls. And you can do open calls anywhere that you, like you can go pick, see? So you can go look at Los Angeles open calls, Los Angeles submissions, and be getting your face out there right now, but make sure you're getting it out there with quality submissions. Don't just do 500 self-tapes this week because you see so many projects. Find the right ones for you, take the time to make a really great self-tape, and then show the world what you have to offer, all right? It's, remember, they're gonna be seeing a lot of, a lot of self-tapes right now, so you really want yours to stand out, be high quality, and show the best that you have to offer, not just something rushed to get it out there, right? You may lose opp opportunities or cut yourself off from future opportunities if you rush. So really, really important that you guys uh, take the time. So if I go back to home on Tristan's, um, this is where all the different buttons are, where you can manage your profile, edit resume, etc., etc. So I'll just go into manage profile first. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, pre it's pretty self-explanatory, most of them. It just gets a little tricky when we get to things like resumes, uploading video and media. So if I go to resume, so what's really cool about Actors Access is it's a completely blank slate for the resume. So you can kind of create it however you want. So if you wanted to start with, um, let's see, film. All you do is type in film at the top and you want that to be a header, so you click the box. It automatically makes it film at the very top, okay? And then from here you can start typing in your three columns. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at Tristan's PDF resume that he shared with me. So Tristan sent me his resume, so now I can look and see, okay, we've got theater, film and TV credits, education, music and vocal training. So I'm going to start with education. Um, so I'm going to look and see, so I know you're studying at New Image College film and TV program. So I'm going to go put that one on your resume first at the very top. Um, so if I put training and then click header, and then down below, we could have, say you've done a uh, scene study at New Image College. That could be in the first column to show the skill that you've learned. Um, and then over here, we could have New Image College. And then we could have the name of your teacher. And I know you don't have this yet on your resume, Tristan, so maybe this is something we can work on after. But I know a couple names of the teachers here. I don't know what they teach exactly, so I'm just going to put in some of the names of the ones that I know, just for reference right now to show everyone how it works. Oh, there you go. Oh, and you're typing just as fast as I am. Well done. Okay, Peter Hamlin. Excellent. Okay, awesome.
So now, if you go down a couple of blocks, say we wanna put film and TV credits here. So let's just put film credits here, click header, and I can go back over the resume. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing just because I just want everyone to kind of get a sense of how to do all of this. Um, let's go to film, rec room. So we don't wanna put background on your principal. So guys, if you do have background, I wouldn't put that on your principal resume. Um, we just wanna focus on things that you've got actual credits for. Um, acting work with lines and things like that. So that's really important to know on your actor's resume, especially on actor's access, because it is for principal work. So the perfume of death, principal, new image entertainment. Awesome. So death. Back. Sorry, what are you? Okay. Did I just read that wrong? I must have read that wrong. <laughs> Perfume of death. I was going to say the principle of death and a principle role. That sounded wrong. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Perfume of death. Death principle. New image entertainment. Awesome. They have their own entertainment company directed by the fabulous Amir. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so then if you make a mistake, say you want to move film up above training, all you have to do is move the little arrows up and it pulls it up here. But you do have to do it one by one. See how slow that was? So you might want to really plan it out first before you do it all because it does take a little bit of time to reorder. Um, why is it important to write scene study, new image college here instead of just writing two years, new image college? I'm just gonna add a couple more while anyone gives me their ideas of why that's important. You want to write something in the comment section. Yep, absolutely. So maybe in Vancouver, um, the casting directors here might know that New Image College teaches a full two-year program that includes theater and scene study and movement and action for actors and all that. But if if imagine you're submitting yourself in Toronto or LA or, or Atlanta, they might not recognize the school or the coach that you've had. So it's really important to show the skills that you've learned from that place too, so they know exactly what it is. Because New Image College could be just a full on theater program and they're looking for film and TV things. So it's really important to kind of break it down a little bit as well. So that's perfect question. Yeah, absolutely. So that's exactly what you want to do. Um, now, when you go through your profile here, you'll notice there's a place to put your special skills on a different page. I would also encourage you besides just ticking off all the boxes for the special skills that you have, I would also encourage you to create a special skills column on your resume because you're taught maybe five special skills. So, oops, special skills. So we're gonna jump back over to his resume. Singing baritone, conversational Spanish. checked off like 50 different sports so they can do fairly well or enough for TV, which is great. It helps you sort through it when, when casting agents are looking for who can ski, for example. You have to have that box to tick, be ticked off on your profile, otherwise your profile won't even come up when the computer searches for it because it doesn't know. So it's really great for you to be able to have it here on your resume too. That way casting is looking and they go, like the casting director is looking and going, oh, he's got some film credits, okay, he's got some training, and he's got these three special skills which are really great and might help towards the role. So it's, I think it's important not to include everything on here because you want it to be a nice, clean, tight one-pager. Um, oh, I see some more notes here. Accents, yeah, you could definitely do that as well. When you put accents on here, make sure that you're very comfortable launching into them pretty quickly. 
um, and continue to work on them, guys, especially now that you have the time, and maybe make a voice reel of the different ones that you feel strong enough that you can do. I know some people I've worked with before have checked off like 50 different things, <laughs> 50 different accents that they think that they can do if they worked on it, but I think it's really important if, if your agent, say, sends you to an audition the next day, which is quite often how it happens, and, you, and it's a five page long part uh, that you're auditioning for and you have to go in and memorize all of this and you have to do it in an Atlanta accent, for example. You wanna spend the time working on those lines and really getting the auditions down and not trying to create an accent and work on the lines and everything and rushing into the room 24 hours later. So it's really important if you're gonna list special skills, uh, sorry, your accents on your special skills, like. Be, be ready for them, have practice them, have them in your repertoire and be pretty solid at them and work with someone from that place so that you can consistently practice, you feel comfortable going in. Awesome, so, uh, and then down here at the bottom, professional biography. This does not have to be filled out. And if you are going to fill it out, make sure it's not fluffy, I'm passionate about acting and I really like to work and I really like to sing and I can't wait to meet you. Unfortunately, no one cares. We do as your agents, your friends do, you do, you're passionate about that, and that's great. But a professional biography is exactly what it says, professional. So if you were also uh, a teacher or you worked on Wall Street uh, or you taught acting for 10 years in theater, those kind of things belong there and you want them very short and sweet. So nothing fluffy, not my name is Brandy and I have been passionate about acting for 10 years, I can't wait to meet you. That's not what this is just things that might help you secure the role because most actors are really passionate about this but writing that there doesn't help you they want to know what skill set you have so that they can trust that you're the right person for the job so just remember that when you're creating your professional biography so now if i hit save preview profile so we haven't uploaded a photo yet but this is this is what his resume currently looks like at the bottom uh, on the on the main page sorry now I'm going to go over back to home. When I can in. <laughs> uh, would I put that I've taught acting? I mean, you could. That's that's kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing that we could definitely talk about. It really depends on what capacity and where and uh, and if it adds to your resume. Um, but that's definitely a like a more deeper conversation with you and your agent for sure. As Canadians, oh Michael, hi. As it is acceptable to submit a SAG after projects for shooting outside of Canada or will that annoy casting? So a lot of the time if they've opened it up to Vancouver, they want to see people that are outside of the US uh, and they want you guys to submit, especially if they show it on Actors Access. Um, that's part of why on the main page when you're creating your profile, there's a box to tick off if you can legally work in the States, where you have a work visa and things like that. So it's really important to fill those out uh, very consistently. But if they are pushing it to Canadian agents and Canadian actors, that means that they like to see who's out there, right? They're looking for the right person for sure. Uh, Jackie, as someone with no previous acting experience, what could I put? Uh, your training, for sure. You don't have to have credits to, to begin going for auditions. You just have to have training for an actor. Um, and if you don't have that yet, then I would wait until you get to actor's training to be on this software, especially in Vancouver. Uh, in Toronto, there's a lot of commercials and things like that on, on here, but uh, in Vancouver, it's pretty much all principal work. Or Casting Networks, Jackie, might be a good place for you to, to work at right now because there's a lot of commercials and indies and things like that, so you can get your feet wet. But really, to be an actor, you need full-on actor's training. You need to invest in it. It's like any other profession. You want to be a doctor, you go to medical school, right? It's the same thing with being an actor. And there's so much involved. I'm still learning every day. So, yeah, good question, though, for sure. Um, okay, so manage media. So add new performance videos. So uh, Tristan sent me a couple different videos. Uh, so I'm going to try and upload one now. <clears throat> this is where I see a lot of problems. People have like a 20 gig video and they're trying to upload it to the software and they can't. Um, so all you have to do guys, remember Google is your best friend. <laughs> okay, all you have to do is go to Google and type in trim mp4 and say you have a thir three minute long video but you only need one minute of it because they charge per minute on this software it's 22 dollars a minute um, all you do is go to trim mp4 and there's lots of different options that are free and online i personally like this one a lot it's cap wing uh, it's just a free one so all you have to do is click to upload so you just upload a video here and it allows you to 
um, crop it down. So let me go into Tristan's and see if I can drag and drop this. So I'm gonna take one of his slates because I know that's quicker. If it works, ah. I'll get that box to go away. There we go. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like it's going through. Let's see, April 23rd. Mayor, I'm not seeing this folder, love. What folder is there? So, so sorry, sorry guys, just I need just technical help for one second. So, this one down here, I'm trying to pull this video into here, but it's not letting me find it, like when I click to upload. No. Where, where would that be? Nice. Awesome. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so if I pull this one over, let's see how long this one is. Oh, this one's seven seconds, which is awesome. But say we wanted to trim it to five seconds. All you have to do in this one is grab the bar and bring it down. Because in Actors Access, to have slates, uh, you can have a slate for free for seven seconds. <laughs> you can have a free slate for seven seconds. But say you make one that's nine seconds long, because um, it's just got dead air at the beginning or the end. All you have to do is upload it to one of these sites. And like I said, just, just Google how to trim, how to make something smaller or longer. Uh, and this, these free softwares work really well. So once we've done that, you just hit done, you save it, and then you upload it. Okay, so instead of contact your agent to find out how to trim a video or how to compress it, just try Google first. All you have to do is click compress MP3 uh, or trim MP4 or whatever it is that you need to do. So if I go to add new performance video, it allows me to browse. Make sure you read everything over here, guys. I, I know a lot of people have contacted me and asked me questions, and the answers are literally right over here. Um, like, what types of files can you upload? So it shows them right here. And if you're not sure what that means, when you actually look at the file that you've taken off your phone, I hope this is big enough for everyone to see. Um, see how it says actingresume.pdf? A PDF is a type of file. .mp4 is a type of file. .jpeg is a type of file. So that literally tells you what it is. I've had a lot of people um, make videos on their iPhone and then send it directly to me and it comes through an MP4A format and usually it asks for just an MP4. I've also had people do um, voice recordings and it comes through an MP4A and it just has like a black screen but they wanted an MP3. So if you're not sure how to do that, again, all you do is go to Google, type in convert MP4 to MP3, for example. And it will bring up, and you can even type in online free if you're worried about it. It will bring up a variety of websites where you can do this. Okay, so it's really easy just to search. Um, so I just see a question. Can you show how to take a single video and cut it into clips? I don't think I'll be able to do that for Tristan's profile today because we would have to pay for the videos and his isn't quite ready to go on there yet and split up. Um, but I might be able to do that in a different profile for sure. Again, though, if you're not sure how to do this, remember agents, we don't own these softwares, we just use them. So the best thing to do is email the uh, support or call the support number for these different softwares and they'll walk you through everything. They're the ones that design the software and so they'll be able to give you the best way to do it. Yeah, so uh, it's literally got that information right here. So as soon as you hit upload media, it'll tell you how to do that. So casting directors prefer clips. What does that mean? If you're a brand new actor and they've never seen you before, but they want a taste of who you are as an actor, and you have a five to seven minute reel on there, they probably don't have time to get through the reel to see everything you can offer. But say you're submitting yourself for a, a really tough, dramatic role as a police officer, and you have a 30 second clip from something you're super proud of where you portrayed kind of a similar character, and you think it would be good to, to, to send, it's much better to have that 30 second clip that they can watch instantly and get a very good idea of who you are as an actor and if you're right for the role than to have a four or five or six or seven minute reel in there. Um, so like it says right here, submit the role that best fits you for the project, uh, submit multiple clips to create a custom reel every submission and it will join them together. So say it's a, a lead, lead role in a feature film and it's someone that's a tough police officer but they also have a really beautiful soft side and they're also a great parent. 
Um, and you have three different clips that reflect the different levels of emotion and range that you can bring. If you have six clips on your profile that are uploaded and you only want to select three or your agent selects three to send in with that exact submission for that role and that feature, it will create its own little reel for them so they can see exactly what you want to share. Um, yeah, and if you need help, right there, they've got, they've got numbers to do all that kind of stuff for you. So if you're not sure how to upload a two minute reel and then cut it into smaller clips, just give them a phone call or shoot them an email and they'll be able to help you uh, as best as you can. Because remember, it's 22 US dollars per minute or fraction thereof, which means if you have two 30 second clips and you upload them separately, you're paying $44. That's $22 for one 30 second clip and $22 for another 30 second clip. Now, if you combine two clips together into one one minute video, upload it, and then split them into two different scenes, you're only charged once because it's up to a minute. Okay, I think it's like a minute and four seconds. I think they have a four second grace period kind of thing. But again, just play with it a little bit so that you can figure out um, how to save yourself money, but also get a variety of clips up there for your agent. And when you create a variety of clips, name them properly. Um, don't put like a walk through the city or something like that, like a title of something, because nobody knows what that actually means. It's really important to have, like if it's dramatic or comedic and, and what, the, what they're gonna see, what type of role that they're gonna see or what type of emotion it evokes when they're gonna watch it. So it's very like detective, emotional, dramatic, you know, something like that. Okay. Ooh, Tristan, I, that's a tough question, love. I mean, right now, I think, I think if you're looking at indies and projects like that to submit for, for, for progress and for uh, audition practice and self-tape practice, I think that's great. Um, but for the big feature stuff, I would wait until you're really ready, finished with your, I mean, you're, you're doing a two-year acting degree, right? Like that's, that's something that's going to have you so ready to go after the big, meaty jobs that you want. Um, I, I would wait for the bigger things just because then you're 110% ready. I didn't even realize when I first started how much there was to being an actor, how many little nuances there were to actually being the person that gets the job. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's always going to be up to you. Um, but I would be looking at indies and things like that and doing some self tapes so people get to know you for some of the other projects as well during this time. Because we don't know. It could be six months, could be a year, it could be next month. You never know. I mean, that's, that's up to you, love. You know what, what you're ready for. But I would just make sure that you're 110% ready because there's so many things out there that you don't know yet. Um, yeah, but that's definitely a, a, a good question to ask. Uh, Denise said, uh, if you have training but don't have any film or TV credits, do you have to wait to get some before you can make this account? No, not at all. You can start making it um, if you don't have film or TV credits. If you have training, it's, it, I think it's good to start creating it. Maybe you're not being submitted um, at the beginning because you're you're account's not completely ready, but it's good to start and then look and see how you can continue to improve it, right? Um, close. So this one, again, contact support if you need help with the individual software, because each one's different. Uh, and you want your agent spending time looking for jobs for you, not um, condensing files and things like that. So it's really important to, to contact these guys. Okay, so if I go back to home, you can do all of this up here too, guys, under my tools. It's all under this list. I just always like to refer back to home as you can see kind of everything that's on there. Um, so manage representation. A lot of my actors have, have joined, created a profile and forgot to add Ignite. Uh, so you're in control of your profile. That's really good to know because say you move on from your agency and they created it and they have the password and everything, you want to be able to take your profile with you. You want to be able to edit it and control it because it's your profile. Um, so you have to go into manage representation, add representation, and then you could put in, say Tristan signed with Ignite eventually one day. He could put that in there, submit the request, then Actors Access will approve it and send the agent, um, a, hey, Tristan would like to join you as a representative, are you cool with that? And we say yes, and then you have access. So it does take a little bit of time, especially if you do it after hours, but it's usually right the next morning. Um, so just make sure you add your representative if you are working with an agent. Or again, you can have your own profile and just be self-submitting. But you only see the jobs that they post to Actors Access. You don't see the ones that they post to Agents Actors Access, which is called Breakdown Express. It's the same software, it's just uh, a different name for agents from actors. So size card, again, this is really important. A lot of people think, oh, I don't need to put my height and weight in there. You do, because if they're looking for a family 
and they want a super tall family for this because it goes with the storyline and you don't have your height in there and they're searching for people that are six foot tall or higher or taller <laughs> I should say and you don't even have it in there you won't even come up in the search so guys really important to have all of these things put in there so if I put that Tristan is three foot one and he weighs 104 pounds Tristan we can edit this after I promise <laughs> um, and then hit update preview profile so then on this page it'll have your size card with that information in there and if you don't have every single thing filled out and they're searching for it specifically especially there's lots of commercials that'll say hey we're doing a shoe commercial we need everyone to be size 7 so only submit people that have size 7 shoes because we need them to be able to try on the shoes that are in the commercial so those kind of things are important to have every little bit filled out that's why it's important to log in and, and have them filled out I'll go back to home manage photos so it shows right here, you can post two photos for free and swap or replace the free photos as often as you wish for free, which means you can upload unlimited photos. You just have to pull the other two. Um, if you want to have six available photos though for casting to see and your agent to see, then anything beyond the first two costs $10 each. I would, I mean, at the, right now everyone's on a budget. I get it. Upload your two free ones, but also have um, some ready to go for when the industry starts up really progressively again so that you have three or four different ones in there so they can see the range that you have because uh, like the video clips your act, your agent can choose which photos they're going to send through they can maybe pick one that fits or they can pick three or four that fit the role so that's important to know that and then down here it talks about slate shots so um, this one they explain that any video that's uploaded, once you upload it and you remove it, then it disappears because that's too much for them to hold that in their database. Imagine if they have 20,000 actors North America wide that are all in this database and they're holding all these deleted videos from them. So it doesn't hold, but the photos do because they take much less space up. So um, read all of this. Restore pay for a photo, go to manage photos, click remove photos and click restore photo. So once you remove it, it's still there. It's just in your remove photos tab. So guys, it's, a lot of people will see this and go, oh, that's too much to read. I'm going to go on to the next thing. Really, really important <laughs> that you don't do that. <laughs> um, that you read every single thing and take notes. I, like what I do when I get to a new software is I actually take this and copy and paste it to a Word document and print it out. So every time I'm creating something for someone, I have this right in front of me and go, hmm, how does this work? So really important to read every little bit. Go over to questions for a sec. When you click on the projects, does it show the types of roles that are available? Yes. Um, here, let me go back to a breakdown for a sec just to answer that properly. So let's see, we go to LA. Uh, varsity black and blue. So when you scroll down, guys, so you'll see all the main details up here. Then you scroll down and it shows you. So Jacqueline, they're looking for someone 18 to 23 years old, Caucasian female. So then you click on that, and that's how you can submit yourself. So you can add your photos, you can add your media, you can include your side, size card if that's important. You can include a note to casting. Please know that they don't want the fluff again here. They don't want to, looking forward to auditioning with you. I really love what projects you've done in the past. They don't want that. They just want anything that's super concrete. So if they say, uh, we need actors that are both able to work in Canada and the US because we're filming in both countries, that's the kind of thing you want to add in here. Very short and sweet, just exactly what they need to know, no fluff. Okay, cut the fat. <laughs> just the meat. Give them exactly what they need. Yeah, so that's how you choose a role uh, to submit. And, and read up here, if possible, please submit Actors Online demo clips. So they want to see your demo clip with these. Uh, so make sure you read all the notes. And then once you've selected the role to submit yourself for, uh, you can just go back to the breakdowns at the beginning. And they should all have those listed in there. Um, uh, Ginger, all the breakdowns, CNA, etc., that we see, can we submit to or will be double submitting with you? So, again, I would encourage you to um, submit, but be very careful that you know exactly what the submission is. I know on certain softwares, like Casting Workbook, for example, a lot of the casting directors will choose to show you only the basics. Um, and then they'll give the agents a much deeper character breakdown. Like I've had some of my actors say, hey, can you submit for that cop role on this show? And I go look at it and, and it's like, I need a short female and he's a tall male, for example, the actor that asked me. So I, I don't know why um, 
they choose to not share everything with you guys sometimes. Maybe it's to stop you from self-submitting, but I mean, that's why it's important to have a good relationship with your agent and for your agent to know who you are as an actor and kind of what you have in your repertoire so that they know. Um, but if you're really keen on being submitted for something and you're not sure, I would ask. I know that certain softwares, an agent and an actor submitting for the same role for the same project, the agent's uh, submission trumps the actors. So only one will come through to casting. Um, yeah, so uh, I think it's still good for you guys to submit. It shows that you're, that you're gung ho, but make sure it's the perfect submission for you. Because if you submit too much, they can just ignore your profile and turn your submissions off. So just be cautious about that. Be really right for the role. Like some of you think that you can play 12 years old to 27 years old and, and you don't look like that when they come through on camera. Um, so know yourself and be submitting for the perfect things. And if you're not sure, ask your agent. Um, Oh, nice, Tristan. Thanks. <laughs> um, also, dash. Ah, Tristan, I like that question about accents. Um, I mean, you have to be kind of delicate at this time right now, right? There's, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, that, for example, East Indian and you're Caucasian, very Caucasian looking like myself with the freckles. I, that could be good for, say, I don't know. I think you really have to be careful with that. It can be considered racist if someone's doing something. It's kind of like that whole black face. Thing. No, I can paint my face black. You have to be very careful with those kind of things. So I might only leave things on your resume that helps uh, your, your opportunities to get cast in the project that you could get cast in. I mean, they're going to be picking you based on your, your skills more than anything, and then you could develop that. So I'd be very careful with putting things that could be seen uh, a little bit. A little bit scary for you to try and branch out into things. Yeah, leave it out. I like a good call. I just, guys, you have to be careful. We, you never want to offend anyone, even if you have the best intentions. Um, sometimes you can, you can do or say the wrong thing. So it's good to leave things out that might be potentially offensive. Or chat with your agent, and we can know that you have that. And say a project comes up where they want to cast people with different ethnicities to do different accents for a cartoon or something. I'm not sure why they would do that, but if they did, at least we know about it. Yeah. With that. So back to manage photos. So add new photo. Browse. Browsing. So I'm going to pick the first headshot. Open. Upload. Takes a minute to upload. It shows you kind of what it looks like. Hit continue. Now you can rotate it if it's if it didn't come up the right way, it's fine now. So continue. Now you get to crop it. A lot of people don't crop it. And um, so say we had it like this and you didn't hit crop and you just hit continue. It will have that gray box around the outside the whole time. So we want to make sure that you're cropping it properly to exactly what you want to show. And you can zoom in or out here, you can rotate it again, things like that. Apply changes. Once you apply changes, then it goes to the uh, correct format, and then you can go forward. So, see how it says my AA account, so my Actors Access account. Once you have added an agency as your representation, so say Tristan decided to sign with Ignite Artists, you would then have technically two separate accounts within Actors Access. So you would have your AA account, which is what you see for you self-submitting, and it would say Ignite Artists as well. So you can add these photos to Ignite Artists or Actors Access or both, okay? So really important to play around with that a little bit. And then you have to choose a category for this. There's theatrical, which is TV and film, or commercial. Now, other. Other is like a black hole. It's a complete void. No one will see that photo ever except for you and your agent. Um, it's it's something that they, they told us when we went in to do a tutorial there that it was kind of like a black hole and it was just there to be there. Um, so if you want to hide photos that you've uploaded, that's where it can go. But just know that nobody sees those if they're looking at your overall profile. Um, so then I would choose theatrical, continue. Now, they always want you to sign up for Actors Access Plus. Um, so they're going to ask, they're going to tell you why. <laughs> and you can choose if you're going to do it or not. Um, but we get two free photos, so I'm going to add one more. 
Uh, actually, first, so see we've uploaded this photo. Now you can add a slate shot for free and it will be attached specifically to this photo. So really important. So say you uh, do headshots with Rebecca Roberts, for example, and I know Rebecca includes slate shots with her headshots. So say you've got your CW headshot and your CW slate and you want to add those two together. This is where you would do that. So add a slate shot, browse, you recorded a slate shot for us, open, you're attempting to upload a large file. Please do not close or click on the browser. Okay, fine. So it means it's okay. Upload. Wait for the red bar to load. Booms. Now we want to add another free photo because he has two add items. Add photo. Browse. Blue shirt. Upload. Continue again. You can crop it however you want to, and you can go back in and edit this anytime, guys, that you want. So if you notice it's not standing out, um, yeah, just go back in and edit that again. Select which profile, and if he was with Ignite as well, it would also say Ignite, and you can select that and send it to us at the same time. Um, theatrical again. Continue. Now we go down. Um, okay. Submit. Elevator music sponsored by Brandy. <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry, I can't sing, guys. Okay, so it's got the receipt. It's shown that it hasn't charged any money. This is when it happened. Da, 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 da. So now hopefully we go home. It usually takes about a half an hour for Actors Access to approve the photos that you've uploaded, so don't panic if they're not there right away. Um, they usually take about a half an hour before they get onto your profile. Um, just a question, financials on my own account, this is what you're going to add to my agency account, should I allow you to add it or how does it work? Cindy, that's a great question. I've always been a little bit confused as to how they differentiate that um, because I, I feel like I see what you guys have put on my account too. It's The problem is I don't get to see your Actors Access accounts. I only see the ones that you've uh, allowed us to see with Ignite Artists. So, um, that was a little confusing. We'd have to look at each, we'd have to, I'd have to literally sit beside you and you log into your Actors Access and me log into my, uh, my Actors Access from my side and see what we see differently. So that might be a good thing for us to do in the future and actually look. Um, but for everyone that has a profile with us, it, I, I mean, I think I see all of your stuff. And if I don't see your headshot, I'll send you a text or an email just saying, hey, your headshot's not appearing. But if you see it on your side, so maybe good to go into your photos uh, and just see if it has, sorry, and see what it has. Preview profile. I don't know where you. Oh no, it's, they're still pending. Sorry guys, they're still gonna, still gonna take a minute for Actors Access to approve those. But I would just go in and make sure that they're ch checked off on the box for Actors Access and for us, because you should be able to have us to see the same two photos as you do for your Actors Access side. Should be able to be on both for the two free ones. Just be careful, because you keep coming to this screen and pressing stuff. Oh, so okay. You could, you could stop there. Ah, okay, gotcha. Don't, don't move the mouse over. <laughs> awesome. So size card we've gone through, manage photos, edit resume, manage slate shots. Let me click on that one. So it's got the same thing here. Not showing your slate shot added yet on there, but we did it. So maybe it takes time to approve as well. Um, we can jump over to another software too and come back to this one once the photos have approved and look at them again if that helps. Oh, Cindy, good to know. Yeah, I know that's why it's, it's tough. A lot of people don't notice those tabs. So, um, where it says Actors Access here too, there would be another tab that would say Ignite Artists. So when you click over to that tab, that's what would show you where what I see from my end in terms of photos. So it's really important to note that, guys, and, and just to look around at everything um, on your profile because each software is different. That's why I wanted to go through this step by step. So we've done the resume, managed media, we've talked about slate shots, photos, profile, breakdown, size card, yep. Uh, manage contact info. I 
really would encourage you guys to check out what email address you have in there, and what address you have in there, and what phone number you have in there. Um, for example, I've been sending somebody their breakdowns for a little while. Every time they have an audition request, and they're like, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. I'm like, I swear I've sent it seven times. I keep going in and resending it. And they're like, no, it's not coming through. There must be something wrong. And I said, okay, contact breakdown or actors access. And then all of a sudden they said, oh, it was an old email address I don't use anymore, so I forgot to look. So <laughs> that was more work for me because I kept resending them the same thing because I don't I don't have control over your profile. That's that's you guys. You have control over your own resume and profile, right? So it's really important that you know um, what's in there. So make sure you're checking your account, checking your email. Your email is where you'll get all your messages from us. So if we submit ten people and a casting director likes two of them. They'll send us information to audition two of you, and then we hit a button that says forward this information to actors. And we forward it, and then we get a confirmation from you guys that you're good for that time in the audition, and we confirm it. And that's it. So you have to make sure that you don't just look at the email, but you also log into your actors access and check out the CMAL. It's, it's your actors access mail, because you will get things from people that are not us. Not just your agent responds on here. So sometimes you'll get a message from casting or an independent that wants to book you for something. So it's really important that you log in and check this too. And I know it's a lot of work. That's why I'm trying to go through it all, hopefully better today. Um, this is a really cool thing as well. Under your tools, if you go to custom link, it'll give you a one pager that shows you everything that's in here. That's also available when you go back to your homepage and you go down. Um, where did I just View your account. Where is it? Where did you go? I just saw the button. Mm -hmm. Nope, I'm not seeing the button anymore. Okay, I'm not seeing it. So maybe go back to under my tools and then just down to custom link. And I love the custom link because if you're submitting yourself for something outside, of actors access and you want to share a one pager of your profile you can use this so say Tristan loves his username the Tristan Manning now he hits save now view link oh, the page I'm attempting to view is private <laughs> of course it would do that oh my goodness I'm wondering why it's doing that because it doesn't usually do that Link. I wonder if it's on someone else's computer. Normally it gives you a one pager for everything here. Hmm. Deactivate, save. Hmm. Okay, sorry, it was it was already checked as deactivated. Sorry, so you have to unclick that. Sorry, I didn't even notice that box. See, again, he even I do it. That's why it's so important to read everything. Um, yeah, isn't that cool? It literally just gives this whole thing. So he's already started to add um, some more stuff, which is awesome. So he's got his accents in here, physical characteristics, special skills, training, film, um, and it all appears on one, one page. Uh, see what I mean by special skills? See down here where it's all these, it's just in alphabetical order, but it gets kind of, if you have a lot ticked off, it's hard for casting to really see what your top special skills are. So that's why it's important to include the really strong ones up here on your resume as well. So I'm going to just go through every single tab just to make sure I haven't really missed anything. So home, this is what the home tab looks like. Breakdowns, we've done that where you can choose cities that you want to see breakdowns for. Um, yeah, just be careful you're not spam submitting to everywhere all the time. Make sure it's applicable to you um, and you're able to submit for it. Account information, manage profile, email, custom like order history. I don't think we've missed anything in here. No. Yeah, it's really good, right guys? I would just log in once a month and go through every single tab and make sure like, do not send me reality TV breakdowns. It's checked off right now. Tristan, if you want to be on the next Love Island, you would uncheck that and hit save. And then you'll get information about the reality TV breakdowns too. Um, so guys, that's why it's really important to look through every single page and make sure everything's filled out. Don't just do it quickly just to get it done, but do it right, right? It's really, really important. Um, about me. Yeah, so the about me page. This is something where a lot of people will miss 
uh, gaps. I see that Tristan already logged in and did this while I was creating it, but it's really important for you guys to uh, go and do this page. So you would put in your name, your middle name, your last name, if you wanted that on there. You'd put in your age range. Really important for you to um, incorporate something like that. If you're not sure how to do your age range, casting directors that I've talked to and established actors that I've talked to, they say five years below your actual age and five years above is a really safe window that you could be cast for. Be very, very careful if you stretch it further than that. Um, maybe in person you can look 14 and you're 25, but you have to really think about on camera when you're doing self tapes and do your headshots reflect that you could do that? And are you truly able to go from 25 to 14 in terms of life experience when you're bringing your acting to the screen? Some can and some cannot. So it's really important to know that about yourself. Because if you say you're a 14 year old, they're expecting a really new young teenager fresh about the world who looks 14. So be very, very careful. That's important. Okay, bye, have fun at work. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, really important to have your union status checked off. Even if you're non-union, see right here? So non-union, that's super important because if they're looking for non-union people and you don't have that box checked, they won't even see you. Super important to have your hair, eyes, all that kind of stuff because if you're trying to put together a family of people that all have blue eyes, they're looking for that sometimes in here because they'll get 2,000 submissions for certain roles and, and then they'll try and break them down by exactly what they want. Do you have a U.S. work permit? So if you submit for something in Chicago, for example, and they get 3,000 submissions from North America wide, then they'll go, okay, who can actually work in the U.S. and Canada? And then they'll tweak that and they'll go from 3,000 submissions to 300, for example. So it's really important you have all of these things filled up. A lot of stuff will film overseas, like when they were doing Vikings in Ireland, they were saying, please only send us people that can uh, be in Ireland working legally within a month. So we had to really search through that. So it's important that you fill out all this information. Yeah, so when you hit preview profile, you can see that it all goes through here. Great, but that one pager is so much stronger because it's just one clean page and it shows casting directors exactly who you are. Now just to show you, and I'll uncheck these after, but say you check a whole bunch of special skills. Um, because you want to have things in here because this is how they sort through 3,000 submissions to get it down to 300 if they want someone that has canoeing and cricket, for example. Um, but imagine if you check, tick off 100 because you're a super multi-talented human being, and then you hit save. And then when they go to uh, your one pager, see how much that is? And I didn't even click that many, but that's just like a blur of stuff in alphabetical order. And it's really frustrating if you're a busy casting director to try and go through and find, okay, mime. Does he have any mime experience? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> oh, mime, there it is. So if you're a really strong person at some special skills, that's why up here is so great to have. So singer, mime, whatever it is up here. Um, but still have all these ticked off too. Don't, don't miss that part because that's what the computer looks at in order to pull up your profile. Cool. Awesome. Back here, uh, tools, custom link. The order history is just if you've paid for 10 photos or paid for seven videos, it just shows you what you've paid for. Um, again, manager representation is if you want to add an agency, but get permission from that agency first. Make sure that they've actually signed you, don't just willy-nilly add an agency. <laughs> um, submissions, that would show you, if we had submitted for several projects, it would show you what you've submitted in here. So for those of you that have asked your agent for a submissions report, if they ever ask you for one back, this is where you would come to show a submissions report. Um, auditions. Now this is important. Under uh, auditions, whether in person, it's going to show you here. You go to current and it shows you which ones are coming up. Uh, yes, Sydney, I did. All of a sudden two people popped up on my, um, on my roster that I'd never met before and I met, emailed both of them and said, Hi, I see that you uh, put Ignite Artists as your uh, representation. Um, did we meet? And they go, no, my friend just told me that you were a nice agent, so I decided to add myself. But it's, I mean, a lot of them don't know, right? Newer actors are just excited and they don't realize how it works. I think people forget that this is a profession and it's a real job and you have to take steps to get to where you want to be. So they get excited. So I get it. I'm not blaming them. It was kind of cute. <laughs> uh, but I definitely had to ask them to remove themselves and tell them that we couldn't do that. So just careful. Ecocast. What's an ecocast? An eco. Oh gosh, sorry. An ecocast is a self tape. 
Ecocast is the name for the brand of like eco of, of self tape equipment and software that this uh, company Actors Access uses. So when you see an Ecocast invitation from Actors Access, it literally just means self tape. They just have their own brand of self taping equipment and software, which they call Ecocast. But it's the exact same as submitting a self tape on any other software. So uh, no worries about that. It's just good to know that term. Uh, services, get sides, talent link, all this other stuff. Uh, really important for you to know, get sides. If you have the free Actors Access account, it costs you, I think, one or two dollars. I think it's one dollar. Yeah, to download the sides. Your agent can download them for you for free, but imagine if your agent has 50 different people with 50 different sides for different auditions in the next day. Again, you don't want them spending an hour downloading everybody's sides for free for you, so that's why it's beneficial for you to upgrade to Actors Access Plus, especially when the industry picks up again. I understand if you're saving money right now, I totally get it, we all are. Um, but once it starts moving again, you're starting to get auditions all the time, I highly recommend you upgrade to Actors Access Plus and download your own sides. It saves time for your agent and it, it allows you to look at a few other things that are in the back end. I won't give you any more information, but you will see some other information in the background when you go to get sides. Otherwise, your agent's just going and downloading the sides for you and emailing them to you directly outside of Actors Access, which doesn't always give you all the information. So, really good for you guys to be able to do that on your own. Uh, tell it link again, I think that's the Oh, yeah, sorry, this is completely different. If I were you, I read through some of this stuff. It's not uh, necessary for you to get right now, but um, really important for you to, to know some of the extra added things that Breakdown Services or Actors Access uh, offers. Uh, yeah, so these things, again, those are just different services that are outside of, of um, what your agent can do for you and submitting on the software. The blog too, each, each of the different softwares has a different, um, like Casting Networks has it, Casting Workbook has it, and Breakdown Services has it. So again, you'll see, it says Breakdown Services over here. So Breakdown Services is the, the parent company of Actors Access and Breakdown Express. So Breakdown Services is the big company, then Actors Access is for actors, Breakdown Express is for agents, and Ecocast is their self-tape software. So I know it can become a little bit confusing, that's why it's so important to write down notes and just know this going in. And they have some really good articles and things in here. They tell you about the industry, what's coming up, uh, teach you about related things if you want to also go to writing and producing one day. There's lots of great stuff on here. Talks about unions, stunts, et cetera, et cetera. So really cool to go into each software and check out all the additional services that they offer because there's tons of stuff. Always, always, always. I'm always in the back end of these looking for uh, ways to update our, our roster on the industry. So really good for you guys to know that you have this at your disposal. Thanks, Tristan. You too. <laughs> um, okay, so that was Actors Access. Now, casting workbook. This is the one that costs $10 a month. Um, there's not very much posted on here right now, but I would, so I would focus on casting networks. Now, everybody gets these two confused, and they are the same color. <laughs> uh, and, oops, sorry, let me go. Sorry. Ergonomic keyboard, I'm not used to it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so see, casting networks and casting workbook are two completely different softwares. Okay, everyone gets them confused. So it's really important to know that they are two completely different softwares and you need a profile in each to be constantly submitting yourself and getting submitted by your agent for different jobs North America wide. This may change soon. Casting Networks is very new to Canada, but they're doing extremely well. They've got a lot of casting directors using them. Um, so it's really important to have a platform on all of them and watch the trends. I know right now, because casting work would cost money, that it might be the last one that you do, which is totally fine. I just want you to know that once the industry does pick up, it's important to check this one out and get on it. So let's focus on uh, Actors Access right now, which we just went through, and then I'll show you Casting Networks. What's even tougher about this is the color. They're both light blue. See that? Light blue, light blue. So everybody gets confused because the names are very similar and the colors are very similar. I'm sorry about that. It wasn't me that created it. I promise I would never have done it. Um, but uh, both really great, so strong softwares, and you, and you need to be on the mall to see all the different opportunities because each casting director will use a certain software. 
So casting networks, if you are in Canada, for example, you can go to the Canadian one and it gives you some options in here where you can join now. This one allows you to create a free account so you're not spending any money. It's good to jump on it now and start to create and that way you can tweak it and learn as you go. Um, also really cool about this is if you can't afford headshots, they have their own studio. Obviously it's closed right now during the pandemic, but once it reopens, um, they do really, really cheap studio shots. It's a quick like 15 minute session, but you get a professional looking photo. So if you're on a budget and you're just beginning, stop going out and spending $500 on a top headshot photographer if you don't even know what characters you can be cast for yet, and you don't know how to use your face on camera and things like that. So this is a great option to get a cheap, quick professional headshot. Uh, that'll work for your profile while you're going through some of the smaller projects and ramping up your training for the bigger projects. Um, so if you go to join now, here, uh, so I'm going to create Tristan's right now. <laughs> um, doo -doo. Sorry guys, I just need to open my information right here. Okay. Thought. Whoa. because there's a free software, there's a free profile if you have an agency. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> oh, goodness. Where's the habit? Um, at the bottom, a lot of people get confused. The just I swear again, I'm not using this bad at typing. <laughs> just my new keyboard. Um, so, Tristan, I'm going to put Brent... Oh. I'm going to put a password that is Brandy Rock's one. <laughs> uh, just for now, you can go in and fix that after. Uh, it's going to let you change it right away. So if you see down here, working with rep, so if you put no and go to the next page, it's going to try and charge you money. So Tristan, I'm going to put you under ignite just for the sake of doing this so people can see how uh, to get a free account on here. So you do need an agent to have a free account, otherwise we try and charge you. So go to, yes, I have a represented profile. Now your agency has a code. Each agency has a different code, so I'm going to put in our code. Uh, check agency. There we go, it's a valid code. We're a registered agency in British Columbia. There you go, so then you click next. Now, of course, they always want you to upgrade, and it's great to upgrade once you're ready for it, once you have the content. Uh, but right now, to stick with the free one, you just scroll down. So see how it's got this one, this one, this one, it tells you all this different stuff. If you hit proceed without a plan, there you go. Now you have your free account. <laughs> okay, so a lot of people miss that because that's not the highlighted button, which is on purpose. Casting Networks is a company, they still need to make money with data too. So they want everyone to upgrade. But if you're not ready to upgrade yet, that's totally fine. So just accept the terms of use and begin creating your profile. So the basic kind of information goes in here. Uh, whoop, it was June 22nd, I believe, love. 22nd. Oop. 19. Tristan, is that right, lovely? Um, parent or guardian, if you're underage, it's fine. Um, a lot of people tell me that this entertainment work permit expiration. So guys, this is a US-based software, and things work differently in every country. So sometimes it doesn't let, let people push past unless you have a date in here. So all I advise people to do, because Canada doesn't require this, uh, but for some reason to make a profile on this, you need one. So all I do is put January, oh goodness, first, the month, the day, and then I go to like sometime in the, well in the future because it's an expiration date. Do, 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 do. Going. If you have a union affiliation, you can click it here. If you're non-union, leaving it unclicked. Thank you. <laughs> um, mailing address. Oh, Tristan, I don't want to give away your address, so I will use the agency one first, and then you can change it, just because I don't want anyone to know your personal stuff. <laughs> Oh, there it is right there. So 
Oh, can, oh, so a lot of people miss this as well. See where it goes US zip code, Canadian postal code, and it won't let them progress forward. So just make sure you, if you're in Canada, you change it to Canadian postal code. Phone number. Put the office number, Tristan, so you don't have to worry about people grabbing all your personal info off this. Thank you. Too Thank you. Hmm? you keep coming here and you're gonna... Oh, sorry. I don't, it doesn't look like it's going off the screen, that's why it's weird. Uh, what city were you born in? I'll just put Vancouver for now. I love you can change all this right after, okay? Save, continue. Whatever. Cool. Now, this is. The, where I find people have the uh, most difficult stuff. Um, if you check off that you want to see principal roles, commercial roles, etc., right now Casting Networks only has their US version, which means that anything that you see on here that gets sent to you is US based work. I know it shows that it's available for all provinces and states, but that's just a glitch in the system. Casting Networks is currently working on a worldwide version of their software right now that everyone can use worldwide and it won't affect you. So if you have these checked off, you're going to get inundated with emails from all over North America that you 99% of the time cannot submit to. Because it's new to Canada, casting directors send jobs for Canadians to the agents like myself that are registered and represented here and can submit people. So I would highly encourage you to uncheck all these right now until they launch the Canadian version of the software or the worldwide version. Otherwise, you're going to be seeing all these things that you can't even submit for. Um, yeah. So then just go through all of these and, and check, check off whatever you need. Um, really important to fill out every single thing because if you don't have something filled out and they're searching, even if you're agent, say, you, say you're with an agent and they're not submitting you on time. Uh, sometimes casting will be like, I only got three people submitted for this project. Where are all the agents? Well, we want to even look at the agent submissions. Let's just search the entire database and they can do that. So if you are uh, pregnant and six foot seven and they want pregnant six foot seven people and they put that in there and you haven't got those boxes ticked off. I'm not saying to always take those, those exact boxes off, but just for example. Hi, Jenna. <laughs> My boss is here. <laughs> um, yeah, so make sure every single box is ticked off because you got to remember, it's a computer. The computer is the one that's pulling up your profile. So make sure every box that's pertinent to you is ticked off or you may get overlooked for something. I mean, imagine you're a casting director and you have a thousand submissions and you only have a day to go through them all. You can't look at a thousand profiles in their entirety. So they may go, okay, this is exactly what I want and search within a smaller uh, group. Okay, so really, really important to have that in there. Again, fill out everything that is, um, uh, got the little red asterisks next to it. That's really, really important. Um, can't remember, Tristan, I'll let you fill that out. Same to me. Um, skip, so I'm going to skip any of this. Uh, guys, you can rate yourselves here too. This will be changing a little bit once the worldwide software launches, but for now, I just fill it out. Do the best that you can to fill out everything that you have. Um, skip. I'm just gonna skip to the part where we upload video and all that kind of stuff. Not go through all this. Save merchant domain name. So, once you are done filling all of the basic stuff out, it will show you this main page. Just like the other software, they all have kind of a home page that you can go to. So I'm gonna zoom in again, hopefully so everyone can see this a little bit better. And you can go to, right here is like your main page again, so there's the add photo button. All these things are also located up here in the bar. The softwares are fairly similar, they just all have a little bit of different quirks to them. So under your account, you can see the different things here to change your password under your profile. Again, it goes back to what we just did. So I always go back to home. Home just kind of takes me to the very beginning where I can look and see what I want to do. So again, for this one, add photos. So if Tristan wanted to add the same photos, all you have to do is select the photos in here, pick this one, for example, open, next. There. Uh, and it's going to show your agent that you've uploaded other photos. 
uh, on the other side. There it is, it's already popped up. Um, ad video, now ad video is where a lot of people get stuck. So there's this media bin here. If you use Chrome, Safari, um, uh, uh, Internet Explorer, everyone uses different um, browsers. Different browsers see different websites differently, and some of them have different allowances, like some of you might have heard of JavaScript, for example. So if a certain software like Castle Networks uses JavaScript, uh, and JavaScript isn't super compatible with Google Chrome, it might show that there's no media. And so you have to go up, see this lock? symbol up in the top left hand corner. If you click on that, it'll show you uh, what you need to unlock. And you have to go to site settings sometimes and go down to where there's JavaScript and go, oh, allow. And once you hit allow, then it allows you to upload those videos to the media bin. So many times people are like, it won't let me upload, it won't let me upload, I gotta call support. And it's generally just that. Now, now that I've even done that and changed the specifics, it still says to apply these settings hit reload. So now I have to hit the reload button up here. Now it should let me upload them. Okay, so then you just go into add media. It tells you about the release. You have to say that you understand that you're not going to upload copyrighted materials and things like that. So let's see if this works. Now normally there would be a button here. So see where it says no button visible above? Click here for instructions. So we click there. Ah, okay, so this one is flash. Flash is not compatible with this. So now we have to go up to this box again, and we have to go down to site settings. We have to go to flash and hit allow. There we go. Now we go back. Now I hit reload. It allows flash, and voila, the button appears. So this has been the biggest problem for everyone that I've found. It stops showing the button, and it is confusing. It took me about an hour for the first time too to go, huh? Because I just didn't read this below. So now you can go to browse your computer, choose the video that you want to upload. This one's really great because it allows you to upload up to four minutes for free. So it could be a slate to begin with and then three separate clips, but they all have to be in one video. But it's up to four minutes or 100 megabytes, uh, which is awesome. So if you have a, a four minute video that's 200 megabytes, again, all you do is go to Google, type in make file smaller, make, see what type of file size it is, so MP4, make MP4 smaller. Type that in and upload your video to one of these free sites. It'll reduce it so that you can upload your entire video and you don't have to trim it. So just remember, utilize Google if you're not sure how to do something like that. I don't want to use this to add his video because we're not 100% sure that this is going to be the video that he wants right now. Um, and Casting Networks, once you upload a video like the other site, you have to pay to switch the video out. So I don't want to do that to him right now. Um, but a lot of you have uh, individual clips that you want to add. So say you have a video uh, for commercials because Casting Networks has a lot of commercial opportunities on it. And they're always looking for special skills. So say you're a football player and you can also flip pancakes with a spatula really well. And you have videos showing you doing both of those special skills. You can attach individual videos once you upgrade your account beside your resume. So I'm going to go back here, update resume. Now it shows the special skills that we ticked off before. Uh, see that little paper clip? Just hit that paper clip and it says attach videos. Now if I had uploaded the pancake flipping video, the uh, ukulele playing video, and the demo reel, they would all be in here, in his media bin. Then you have to grab that media clip and drag it to attach it to each specific thing, okay? Um, so that's really important for that. Then just make sure you hit save. Attach a PDF resume is great, but um, typing out your resume is really important because it's clean and all in one page as opposed to the casting director seeing your main page and then still having to download another version of your resume, right? You wanna make their lives easier by putting everything on one page. So same as Actors Access, add a new heading. Then in this one, you don't uh, choose what, you don't, sorry, you don't type in the heading to create it, but you pick one from the list. So again, say we're going down to training, then you just hit this little disc here, which means save, add new credit, and again, we do a save scene study, new image college, whoop, and Peter, and Lynn. hit the save button, there we go. Now we do another credit, film, there we go. One, two, three. I'm just going to use this for an example, everyone. 
Now, when at, then you once you're done, you go all the way down to the bottom. Just hit save just to make sure it works. Now we're gonna go home. There we go. So see how it's all showing up on his page now. So you want to take the time to make it really clean, no spelling mistakes, don't put excess information. If you have seven teachers teach a scene study, break it up or just pick two. You don't need to have, because otherwise it'll be compacted and messy. Remember, casting has very little time to make a decision on you, so you want to make it very clean and clear. Um, yeah, so just go through all the tabs at the top. Casting Networks right now has a ton of commercials, lots of indies. Um, not right now during COVID, obviously, but before. The, the whole industry kind of shut down, but it is gearing to ramp up as quickly as possible, so it's really important you take the time to go through all of these and, and uh, make your profile perfect. Um, yeah, I would just play, and uh, if you have any questions, reach out to your agent, um, reach out to friends. If you don't know how to do something with the software, reach out to the support people in the software before you contact your agent. Um, because you want us focusing on, on other things like looking for great submissions for you, not on how to compress something or how to upload something to a specific software because each one's different. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much it uh, for those two. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's the basics. And once you have all those profiles done, if you still have questions, then reach out. Uh, does anyone have a final question though before we sign out for the day? Anybody? No? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I hope this helps you to better understand Actors Access and Casting Networks. Casting Network looks very similar, but it's $10 a month and it's quite quiet right now, especially during COVID. So maybe just work on perfecting your two profiles that you currently have. Oh, Tristan has a question. Go ahead, love. While well, I keep talking. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and again, Actors Access, the plus, yes, it's 68 US dollars to sign up for a year of unlimited submissions, but right now there's so many open calls. So if you do have $100 Canadian that you have set aside for your big goals and dreams, I think it's a great time to invest that money into at least Actors Access Plus so that you can be self-submitting for some of the projects that your agents can't even see right now. And then it allows us to work together to get you more submissions to build your resume so that when the right project comes along for you, you're ready for it. Uh, and just keep training, keep training. So don't forget to subscribe to New Beach College's YouTube channel because they're, they're always putting out more content. I mean, you'll listen to even the makeup artists that work to teach movie makeup aesthetics for them. That's pretty cool. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> um, yeah, I can? Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions left, oh, do you? Rodrigo, do I recommend to have a headshot on your resume? Um, I, I don't see why you would need it. I mean, you can if you want. It, I, I would utilize the links on the softwares, like I mentioned that one page on Actors Access, which has your media, your headshots, your resume, everything very clean on one page to send them, as opposed to sending a PDF and a separate headshot and a separate demo clip. Um, but it's up to you, I don't think it hurts. Uh, So Tristan, yeah, during this time, I would still set up the two free accounts. It doesn't hurt to have free accounts and that way you can be tweaking it as you go and perfecting it. And then as you get more stuff, adding to it. So I would definitely still create the account, at least the free version, or even just do one. So you have one good online account that you can use to practice and submit and things like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Rodrigo, I would use the link um, instead of just sending like, just your one pager, but if someone asks for it, it doesn't hurt to have it on there. I, I don't know, I don't think it's necessary because everything's done online now. Oh, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Good luck with that tape I sent you. <laughs> um, yeah, cool, I mean, most of you um, have my email or I'll be back, I'm sure, sometime soon in the future doing another one of these. So if there is something you want a tutorial on or, or some big questions that you have, feel free to uh, send them to Ignite. Our website is igniteartist.ca and our email is on there for more questions. Uh, hope you're all well and healthy and thank you Elka again for sending this beautiful t-shirt. Shout out to you guys and take the message seriously. It will be okay. We'll get there. We just need to you know, take this time to focus on our health and our family and our big goals and dreams and, and yes, binge watch Netflix and some good shows on there for your acting career but also take care of you and 
focus on the big stuff in the future. Thanks again, guys. Have a good one.